Athletic Club have not won the top flight of Spain since 1984 and while clubs like Real Madrid, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid have been able to sign players from all over the world, Athletic Bilbao have not let that happen in their case. They stick to the rules of only signing players from the Basque region which is a tiny place in Spain and an even smaller area in France which makes this Football Manager 2024 rebuild basically impossible. It means we can only sign players from our youth academy Academy, and I'm also adding the extra challenge of only being able to sign players under the age of 18. So already established player like Kepa Aretha Balaga will not be able to join the club as he's not young enough and they're the rules we're setting in place. So welcome to the rebuild of Athletic Bilbao. We have 10 years to complete this. Strap yourselves in because this is going to be a long, tormenting, horrible journey. Luckily for us, there's already some fantastic players here like Unai Simon, a 26-year-old Spanish international goalkeeper who who luckily for us is through the Basque region and come through the Athletic Youth Academy, which is fantastic. It means that for us, our goalkeeper position is going to be locked in because even at 36 years of age, I am 99% sure we're not going to find a better goalkeeper than Eno Simon. And the wonder kid and the player on the cover star of this is Nico Williams. He is 20 years of age and again has been through the Athletic Youth System, which is absolutely fantastic. He looks absolutely brilliant with great determination, great pace, great dribbling, crossing, finishing and first first touch but certainly has some way to go to becoming you know the absolute superstar that we will need him to be if we were lifting this La Liga trophy and obviously we've got his brother in the mix as well in Yaki Williams who is now 29 years of age now changed to a Ghanaian international so he can play international football but as you can see from his international information he is from the Basque country and if you do want to pick up this save it is the hardest save you can possibly do on Football Manager so throughout this video will be hints tips and tricks for you guys on how to properly develop players for how to sign players from the Basque region and also how we're going to build this club from not just being a mid-table Spanish club but by just using the youth system just signing players from this tiny tiny region how you can make the club the best in Spain luckily for us that's not it with the Williams brothers and Unai Seaman we also have 23 year old Ihan Sanchez who looks like a fantastic central midfielder fantastic central attack midfielder and looks like he could be for us a brilliant Segundo Volante on support, which is what we are going to be using for the start of this rebuild. So welcome, Oihan Sanchez. The reason he's not being played in camp is because we've got a 30-year-old Ike Munayin, who again has been here his whole career and looks absolutely fantastic. And he's got a good three or four years left in him, I imagine, to be a starting central attack midfielder. And the fact we can't go out and just buy a brand new CDM means we're going to have to develop Sanchez into being that for us. Now, we're going to be using this 4-2-3-1 system, which when we pick up our best 11 does not put Sanchez in it because it thinks he cannot play that role but we will make him learn that role now Unai Simon is going to be in goal we've got Oscar DeMarcos at right back with Yurai and Danny Vivian at centre back who looks absolutely fantastic as well Yuri Bacicche as our left back with Danny Vesga and Oihan Sanchez in CDMs Berg we are at left wing and Nico Williams at right wing Mulayin in cam and Inyaki Williams up top there is some fantastic one of kids littered throughout this whole squad if we sort this by potential. We've got some players here like Piao Husti Media, Gezika, Albor, Menor. Um, and then I mean, I mean that, that is pretty much it, to be honest. The development center, there is an under-19s, the B team, and the C team, which is pretty cool. So we've got a lot of different options to have young players playing lots and lots of game time. And again, as we flick through this, there is a lot of players here that could potentially be absolutely fantastic for us. But it's not just about the players. We've also got to make these staff the best they can be because when you load up a Bill Bow save. You've only got four out of nine coaches. You've got five out of ten scouts, only two out of four physios. And this will not help you in the slightest at building this club to being the best it can be. So throughout the first season, I'm making our staff the best in the league. That's all the coaching staff, all the recruitment, all the medical staff, even all the under-19 staff, all the athletic staff, and all the Basconia staff as well. We're going to be making them the best they can possibly be. So we can develop all of our players through the different ages as well as possible and obviously the club already has got very good reputation training facilities youth facilities but the youth recruitment is only a three out of five stars we need to improve that and again the way you do that is by making board requests heading to uh, finance and increasing your junior coaching budget and improving your youth recruitment from the networking tab as well and of course i'm going to be doing this every single season try to improve the training facilities try to improve the youth facilities and just try to build this club to the best it can be now luckily in this first season we've got 
no further competitions. We've got the Copa del Rey. We've got the La Liga, which means we've got no Europe, which is a little bit of a shame. Our goal in this for Europe over the next 10 years is going to be to hopefully win a uh, Conference League, hopefully win a Europa League, and you never know. If we get to the point with the best club in Spain, maybe even win a Champions League as well. So strap yourselves in. Season one, let's get into things. The Athletic Club slash Athletic Bilbao rebuild. One more tiny piece of housekeeping. I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to you absolute legends. If you are subscribed to this channel or even if you're even watching this channel, 2023 has been a ridiculous year for me. There was a picture I uploaded on the end of 2022. I had 357 subscribers and around 20,000 views. And we are now seeing here at the end of 2023 with 5,000 subscribers and over 730,000 views. And just saying that out loud absolutely blows my mind. And I want to say a massive thank you because without your guys' support, we wouldn't be sitting here today making the level of videos we can today. So a massive, massive thank you. If you're not already subscribed, join the revolution, join the hashtag Kempi Army and subscribe to the channel. Without more waffling, let's get into things. Season number one then, you join us. We finished seventh in the La Liga, which is very good because we are going to be in the Conference League for the second season, which is absolutely brilliant. It will give us more opportunity to play some young players and obviously a European competition, which we should, I think, be able to win. We'll be one of the strongest teams in that for sure. We were three points off Cadiz in the Europa League and a 10 points off a Champions League spot with Villarreal finishing fourth. Real Madrid and Barcelona are going to be our biggest tests in this rebuild as you can imagine. In our Girona rebuild, we've done five years. We didn't manage to win the league because them two just simply go toe-to-toe -to -toe and get about 100 points every single season. As you can see, 95 points in this first season to even come in with a sniff of winning the league. Now, in terms of our team, we're fifth on most goals scored, which is fantastic, but defensively, not very good. And that is going to be a big old issue here at the club because the centre-backs, we've got Danny Vivian, but the rest of them are all old or not very good potential. So centre-backs could could become a problem. We kept a lot of the ball with 56% possession, but I'm very happy with the amount of goals we scored because that is our strength. We've got players like Inyaki Williams, Nico Williams, Ojan Sanchez, who should be able to create for this club. And we've even got a super sub on the bench in Asier Villabre. Now, I remember this guy uh, probably about five or six years ago now being an absolute wonder kid. He hasn't quite turned into maybe what you've expected to have been. Maybe he stayed at Vlekic Bilbao for longer than he probably should have because he's from that Basque region and hasn't had the game time because Inyaki Williams is never injured and plays every single game. Uh, Ojan Sanchez was great in that Valencia role with seven goals and six assists. Milayin, like I said, he can't be replaced in that cam roll. Seven goals and 12 assists. Alex Borengue with five and ten. And Nico Williams in his first season, a slightly disappointing six goals and four assists. By the end of this 10 years, I want to be able to click on this development, on this training, uh, not training, sorry, on this progress on attributes on all time and be able to see a whole host of stats shooting up three, four, five. But so far in season one, that has not happened. He has been okay, but not absolutely fantastic. Now, these sort of season recaps every single season are going to be very, very quick. There's not a lot for me to go through, especially with signings. So I will show you the start of July so you can see who we have brought in. There'll be a few wonder kids that we are scouting. Now, I have said that in this re uh, rebuild, there will be tips for anyone doing a athletic Bilbao save. So for starters, in terms of trying to find players, and especially if you're doing this under 18 challenge as well, first off, you want to get in your nationality as Basque and under 18 and then what I've been doing for the whole of this rebuild is going through and as you can see what we're doing right now and just scouting absolutely every player now there is only 203 players that are willing to come to us uh, that are in the Basque region so it should only take you a few months which is why you also need the best staff on the block as well and as we head to the staff you can see we have developed our coaching staff to a very very high level the scouts we're slowly getting there as well and same for the physios but at least we now know our players are being trained to the absolute top and uh, like I said with this scouting all you need to concentrate on is this 200 players, making sure you know every single one of them. So if a regen comes through like Julian Vicuña, you'd be able to pick him up instantly. This guy is at Subithia. I'm not sure if we do end up bringing this guy up. I've recorded, well, I did this rebuild, started two or three days ago now. It has taken me a long old time. So yes, we have gone pretty much the full 10 seasons. We're going to go forward now, just a month's time, see if we did make any signings. And I'll show you guys the Wonder Kids we did sign. Well, it was just the one signing and a signing of £1 million. A 15-year-old for a million quid just shows how rare these Basque players are. He's got 14 determination 
combination, 11 dribbling, 13 first touch. Decent physicals, seven finishing for composure. He wants to be a striker. Oscar Mateo, we'll have to see about that. We might end up being a very quick crossing winger. We'll have to see what he turns into, but Oscar Mateo is signing one and the first of this very long rebuild. We're set up in this 4-2-3-1 again. Again, the team hasn't changed too much. There was absolutely no incomings other than Mateo and only a few outgoings. And one of them was actually Danny Vivian, which is absolutely heartbreaking. And as then we realize one thing, all players in Spain have a release clause and Danny Vivian had a release clause of just 34.5 million pounds, which means he left the club which makes our centre-back situation even worse. Yuri Bacice left on a free contract, as does Mikel Vesca and Ivan Anguelo on a loan deal. So we're in a little bit of a spot of bother, and our team actually has changed for this first season because we've got Unai Nunez back from loan. We've got Imanol in at left-back, who looks okay. He's no Yuri Bacice, but he's only 24 years of age and can hopefully develop. And we've really lost our superstar centre-back. So from here on out, uh, after that little scare of Danny Vivian leaving, I gave a player a new contract pretty much every season with a £500 million release clause. So uh, don't expect that to happen again. I think it might happen once to a regen who was a great down the line. So other than that one sale of Danny Vivian who got poached by his release clause, we're going to be okay. I'm going to keep on top of the release clauses. Season two, what can we do? Europa Conference League, Copa del Rey, La Liga. Let's see if we can lift our first trophy, shall we? Yes, we shall. And in convincing fashion, as well it is the Europa Conference League the one that I hoped we would be able to win and it was a 4-1 battering of Newcastle in just 35 seconds Barangwe put us 1-0 up and in just 28 minutes a Barangwe ball to Williams Jr to Albongia who we brought up from the Basconia C team scores there so we're making a good you know little run of our players come through the Youth Academy Alex Barangwe makes it 3-0 in just 32 minutes we're going to make it 4-0 in the first half DeMarcos back to Vincent Dorta Albongia to Ojan Sanchez who lines things up on his right foot and drills it into the back of the net before a pointless Newcastle go. Dan Byrne is going to drive through. It falls to Zaniola in a very lucky manner and imagine not signing players just from the Geordie land of Newcastle. Disgusting club. A 4-1 victory is very, very good and I am very, very happy to say we've lifted our first trophy now in the La Liga. We also done very well. Come in sixth place which means we'd have finished in the Europa League spots regardless of winning that Conference League which is good because because we're becoming a very consistent side. Now, before we start this rebuild, Athletic Club have actually not had the greatest of times. The last time they finished in the top four was 2013. They finished as low as 16th in 2017-18, and we are now on a steady rise after coming to 8th, 7th, and then we've just come 6th, which means we're on a nice upward trajectory. We just have to get to that point before all of our star players retire, like Inyaki Williams, like Yurai, like you know Simon. Hopefully, we can win the league before before that happens, we are 28 points off of Real Madrid, which is, of course, a bit of a shame. The Copa del Rey were knocked out in the third round by Udi Almera, which is a bit disappointing, but not the end of the world. Again, you can see in the scouting, we are going through and just scouting absolutely everyone. This is the last time I'm going to show you this whole scouting malarkey because... It doesn't change from here. This is all we're going to do. Um, and from this set point on, we're going to be very, very quick with every single season. So you're not going to be able to, you know, take your eyes off the screen. You've got 20 minutes up ahead of pure chaos and drama. Seven seasons to go or eight seasons to go. Let's get into it. Season three. So three youngsters are brought in last season with David Bengotia, David Rojo and Mikel Lilo. All looking fairly decent. Lilo being a young 18-year-old Cam. Rocco being a very good right winger slash striker and potentially the replacement for Inyaki Williams. He's only 17 years of age and he's got a long way to go but can hopefully become our star striker. And David Ben Gotstia is a very good young essential defence midfielder. Again, looks decent. We just have to pick up who we can pick up. In this third season, we ended up coming fifth, finishing in the Europa League spots again. Got knocked out in the semi-finals of the Europa League by Lazio and knocked out in the fourth round of the Copa del Rey by Villarreal, which again is a little bit disappointing. But again, it shows we've gone 
uh, eighth was the season before us. Seventh, sixth, fifth. We are progressing as a club every single season. And what we did for this season is locked in two of our youngsters as well. Inyaki Ochoa is a 17-year-old that has come through the academy already and looks absolutely fantastic. And because he's a centre-back, I've locked him in. We need to make him good ASAP. And if he can play alongside an experienced player like Yurai, we're going to be in absolute business. So Inyaki Ochoa, welcome into the centre-back role. And Oscar Oscar Mateo, the signing you saw for £1 million from Osasuna, has been locked in at the left wing role where he scored six goals and got three assists in 32 appearances. As a 17 year old, I'd say that's quite good. Now, he's a little bit inconsistent, a little bit injury prone, which is a little bit worrying, but not the end of the world. This season, Nico Williams put the team on his back, however. 21 goals and six assists with his older brother, Inyaki, 16 and four. Asa Villabre with 15 goals and one assist, and Oihans. Sanchez in that Avalante role is progressing into a fantastic midfielder. 11 goals and 16 assists for him. Now, Nico Williams, these stats are progressing very, very nicely, which is great to see. He's starting to get more and more Spanish caps as well and is now a leading La Liga right winger and close to his full potential. So it's good to see that we're developing him into being an absolute superstar and the same for Ihan Sanchez as well. He is really progressing and he is now an absolute superstar in this Valante role on support. It might not be his best position we could be using him in but we've got players like Inyaki and uh, Inyaki, uh, Ike Munayin who can play in cam that we need to play in that position so we can get the best out of our whole entire squad this really is a rebuild like I've never done before, you really have to utilise older players and any players that could be good for your squad, again a quick showdown of all these players of 5 star or 4 star plus potential, there is a lot here, they are all playing in the under 19s in the B squad or the C squad when they're not playing in the first team and another little Kempi tip if you have a player training with your first team he'll develop at a must much faster rate than training with the under 19s training with a B team or training with the C team what you can do like here with all these four star potential players that aren't quite good enough bring them up to the first team right click on them go squads make them available for under 19 squad for 90 minutes and they will play in every single under 19 game but be training with the first team players and that is a really good way to develop players at a very top right a quick mention to Gaziaka Albonga Menor he played in that conference league final a few a few seasons ago well, a season ago and he's a very very good player if you're doing a flag build by save he is in the Basconia team four star potential extremely consistent and as a centre midfielder 18 games 26 off the bench a 6.91 average rating you really can develop this guy into a very good La Liga centre mid so keep it out for Gaziaka over the course of this rebuild let's go in to see Season four. Two out of the three European competitions have been ticked off the list and this one was won from a 60th minute header from Inyaki Ochoa. The centre-back that we locked into centre-back last season is becoming an absolute superstar for us and he's lifted us a Europa League final which is absolutely brilliant. Last season we were semi-final by Lazio this season we beat Monaco in the final and I'm absolutely buzzing with that. The team was Unai Simon Unai Nunez, Inyaki Ochoa Yirai, Imanol, Benyat Parados Unai Vincendor, Alex Berengur, Mikel Castro, David Rojo, and Inyaki Williams. And there might be some players in there that you actually don't recognize because for the first time, we made a whole host of signings. Mikel Castro was the central attack midfielder you just saw. We locked him in to central attack midfielder for this season. We played 51 games, got six goals and two assists, and has started to take over that cam roll from Ika Munayi. Now, he's not the most consistent player, but with key stats like 16 dribbling, 16 first touch and 16 off the ball. I really hope we can develop this guy into being a top central attack midfielder and cost us a hefty 4.6 million pounds from Ibar. Now, signings elsewhere, and uh, Aguirre was a 1 million pound signing. Looks like a very good young central attack midfielder. Iban Arroyo, another left winger. Caldo Romo looks like a centre back who could become the partner to Inyaki Ochoa. Looks very, very good. Just 5 foot 11 is a little bit worrying. I saw him as a young right back signed from Osasuna, Eduardo Alasade, another goalkeeper signed from Osasuna, and Javier Barandan, a winger slash striker that we signed for free as well. In terms of outgoings, there's not been too many, but more incomings of John and Du Mateo, a centre mid slash count on a free contract, Eotis Pena, a winger on a free contract, and Josepo Mateo, a cam on a free contract as well. Uh, I'm not too sure who has retired, uh, retired or left the club since last time we were here. I think a few players did a few 
few seasons ago. They did indeed. Like Oscar De Marcos has left the club. Uh, Aitor Paredes as well. Inyage Luque has also left the club. So a few players on the outgoings. But this season overall was very, very good. Not only did we win the Europa League, we also finished fifth, which again is another progression or a side possibly, which is very, very good to see. 67 points, just one point of getting into the top four. We would have qualified for the Champions League anyway, just the coefficient rankings being heavily in Spain's favour, which is great. Jude Bellingham, however, might be the best player I've ever seen. 23 goals and 16 assists. Means this Real Madrid team side just got 104 goal difference and 103 points. Ridiculous. 119 goals scored. Uh, 15 conceded they might be impossible to catch they have won every single season in this rebuild so far and i'm not quite sure if we're ever going to be able to stop them our star players for this season last season was in yaki williams this season for us 19 goals from yaki williams 14 for nico williams 12 again from a7 Velabre, 7 and 8 from oihan sanchez and the two players we locked in Mikel castro and david rocco were six and five goals and two and five assists respectively so a very good season Season for developing players and a very good season in terms of progression as well we are managing to sort of keep in the right realms of uh you know top four slightly trying to push on but it's becoming a very very difficult task they are looking like we can progress players very well but can we get them to that next stage while also challenging for that top four that's the worry and the sort of balancing act that i'm trying to play right now can i put three or four youngsters locked into position and pray that they're good enough or do i have to sort of stick by doing one or two a season so we can develop at a more slower rate and maybe by season 10 we are you know pushing for that title slash hopefully lifting the title so that's what we're gonna have to see up next we are doing everything we can to keep improving this as you can see there's not even anything we can uh, sort of ask for right now we've asked for it a million times we have now got five star youth recruitment that was just three star at the start so obviously pushing that has been very very helpful four star youth facilities i'd like to get that to five star and four and a half star training facilities is also absolutely fantastic season five is up next and with season five comes an absolute humbling getting knocked out in the league phase of the champions league we come 26th and uh not a very good showing at all which is slightly frustrating but also not the end of the world i mean we were never going to win the champions league we were nowhere near good enough for that but the good news is that we finished sixth in the la liga meaning again we are qualifying for europe which means every single season so far we have qualified for europe real madrid with 98 points and barcelona with 95 means it's literally impossible to ever get near them madrid have now won five in a row meaning it's a five-year barren spell for barcelona so you can be sure they're gonna be trying to make things uh, sort of right in the next few years as well as we hopefully try and push on to that point now we'd also ended up and uh, not getting knocked out in the third round of the copa del rey I meaning we're still absolutely shocking in that which is not helpful at all and in terms of the squad a few worrying signs are starting to come out as we look at the data hub we are defending very well which is a bit of a surprise of our lack of center backs but we are not scoring enough goals and that's because now when yaki williams and asa Velabre are both two and a half star players which means a brand new striker we're going to need to commit to someone on this list david rojo nico williams potentially getting locked in up front Mikel castro the options elsewhere aren't great oscar mateo possibly Mikel lilo possibly it's going to be tough to find a man that can take us forward. But that is the hardest thing with this rebuild. Not being able to make too many signings, obviously, unless they're under 18 years of age and from the Basque region, means you are massively, massively hampered and massively really sort of guided in the way you can build your team based on how your youth recruitment and your you know staff manage to find players. The rest of the signings we have made, uh, just add one more, I think, from last time out, was Julian Ochoa, a uh, free contract. He is a right winger, again, with some semi-decent potential which means we're definitely building up a club, but maybe not of anyone of high enough ability where we can get them into the first team just yet. Season six, hopefully this season we can stay on to Europe. That is going to be our toughest goal as we have now got no, you know, solidified striker our players are aging. I mean, even Unai Simon is now 30 years of age. We've probably only got three or four years left of a top level goalkeeper. It's do or die situation. Season six is the season that we do. We come fourth and 74 points is absolutely fantastic. Now, you can see at the top of the screen, a 107 point scoring system from a Barcelona is 
ridiculous 35 wins two draws and one losses and second place real madrid with 98 points not winning the trophy is an absolute travesty this is going to be very hard to break into them too, but I've got a little bit of hope. We have come fourth, and that is with a brand new man leading the line as well. David Rojo is the man we chose to be our striker. He may not have scored a whole host of goals with just seven goals and four assists, but has given us some guidance and what we need up front. He can sort of finish. He's got good enough composure, and he's very, very fast. So long ball over the top to a very pacey striker is going to be the tactic for the next few years. And it certainly helped with the data hub. Again, conceding very few goals I say it helped we hardly scored any this season we were very poor in the data hub there but we were okay alright we we're getting there and we're building as a club I mean when you actually break it down into this that is an awful awful season Nico Williams only with 8 goals and 6 assists Oihan Sanchez 10 and 6 Mikel Castro 11 goals and 3 assists and Inyaki Williams with 12 and 3 Mikel Castro 11 goals is fantastic in Cam he is going to be so so pivotal to us actually becoming a good side a signing remember of just 4.6 million from Iba I am buzzing to have Mikel Castro in the team because he gives us a little bit of quality in cam and replaces the probably now retired uh, AK Munayim, which is brilliant. I mean, as we head to release players, Luis Bilbao has just gone. Uh, Asa Valabre, Gorta Gusekia, Alex Berengur, Benyat Parados, and Benyat Gurembuenia have all left the club on free contracts. So Alex Berengur didn't really develop as high as I wanted. He's now at Stoke at 33 years of age, which probably tells you enough, to be honest. Uh, so we are now sort of turning to the youth in that position as well. But we may not have scored too many goals, but we were very solid defensively, which is fantastic. We finished fourth, and as you can see from this league position, we were fantastic all season. We were knocked out in the quarterfinal of the Europa League by Tottenham, which is a little bit frustrating, but a very, very strong side. And knocked out in the third round again of the Copa del Rey by UD Ibiza. So party island for them, not so much for us. Finances wise, as you can imagine we are building a hell of a lot of money at this club because there is nowhere for the money to go we are only signing under 18 years old which means their sort of you know wages are absolutely minuscule we've got no one to really go out and buy so really, we're just going to keep going on the season. So next season comes up and our hopes of winning La Liga come tumbling down because, yet again, a 95 plus point season, 99 for Real Madrid this season, gives us absolutely no hope of ever catching them or Barcelona. We have finished fifth on 63 points, which means we're back in the Europa League, which is probably our level at the moment. We got third round in the Copa del Rey again by Espanyol and round of 16 in the Champions League by Liverpool, which I can take on the chin i mean a 10-3 battering is a little bit rough they they hate a 2b athletic club in this one which is a bit of a shame but you know we move on from that it's not the end of the world uh, goal scoring again seems to be an issue david rocco with just 13 this season in 44 games nico williams is struggling not having his older brother about because he scored just 11 and got seven assists in 30 oscar mateo 10 goals and seven assists is looking like he could be our star striker instead as he has been now moved to the striker position and the other guy has been kicked off to left wing because Oscar Mateo the signing our very first signing in this rebuild is developing very nicely as well he has got 13 composure uh, sorry 13 finishing and 12 composure and great pace but even better determination and maybe he is the step up on striker that we need you can really tell I am scraping the barrel for a striker at this point and I am sort of running around in a million different directions trying to find someone that can take us to the next level I mean we might as well do a little squad view because we've not done this in a few seasons. It's Unai Simon in goal. Nunez at right back. Imano at left back. Yurai and Inyake Achoa at the back. That hasn't changed in a very long time. Vincendor and Sanchez in DM also hasn't changed in a long time with Castro and Cam, Nico Williams at right wing, Rojo at left wing, and Mateo up front. We are starting to get into a pattern. The back seven isn't going to change. Nico Williams isn't going to change. But finding the three that make us tick up front is becoming you know sort of the the, the chokehold of developing this team onto the next level we've still got players like inaki williams kicking around at the club but as you can see from their reports he's now a two-star player and actually retiring at the end of this season which is a little bit frustrating lots of young players of great potential but they now need to reach that potential and become the absolute superstars they could be that would be the absolute dream we've got a central midfielder here that looks brilliant in Ike Asaniola. hopefully he can become sort of maybe a pivot that can develop into a 
number six, which means we can move into a 4 3 3. That could be the unlocking role in this whole system. Season eight is up next, back in our trusty Europa League. How are we going to do? Well, we do lift our third trophy of the rebuild and our second Europa League of this rebuild as well. David Rocco with goal number one in just eight minutes puts us a goal ahead of a very strong set Chelsea side. Even Yold on the left hand side gets it in to Castro with another pass into Nico Williams to score in a final for Athletic Bilbao. It's an absolute dream come true. Uh, Zico, Haraldson and Zico link up for a 2-1 for Chelsea, but it was not enough to beat the mighty Athletic Bilbao. And we seem to be very, very good in Europe, especially sort of the, the minnows of Europe. The Champions League is a little bit of a different story, but the rest we seem to be doing quite well. And in this season, we not only won the Europa League, we also put on an absolute show in the La Liga Santander. We were the third best team on 75 points. Now, yes, Real Madrid got 92 points and Barcelona got 100 and they also finished with another 103 goal different season. But we're getting there. We're slowly building. There is now regens coming through at both Barcelona and Real Madrid that are simply outrageous like Elife, Lefebvre, I mean, what even are you? He's got a £200 million value. He's French and come through the Colombian League. So you know he's an absolute weapon. He signed for £93 million to Real Madrid last season. Scored 15 goals in his first 12 games. So that's the sort of calibre of player we're up against at Real Madrid. And Pedro Squilache is someone that got 16 goals and 20 assists. With 20 finishing, 17 composure, an outrageous pace, an Argentinian sign from River Plate. Again, these are the sort of caliber of players that we're up against. Well, we've got players like David Rocco running down the line, who is decent, but not quite at their level. He is now worth £70 million and has made 150 caps overall with 48 goals. And this season, scored 28 goals and got 13 assists in 47 appearances. So... I'm slating your boy, David, but he was actually very, very good this season. He wasn't the only player as well that took up to that next level with Nico Williams, 19 goals and 14 assists and Oscar Mateo, our very first signing with 18 goals and five assists, meaning we're locking in that cam position of Mikel Castro, left wing of David Rocco and striker of Oscar Mateo. Iortis Peña is someone that's come through the academy as well and looks very good. 17 goals this season, a very good sort of winger off the bench. And of course, our old trusty Oye and Sanchez with a double double in 10 goals and 14 assists we are certainly developing very well but season eight seems like a turning point because we even got to the semi-final in the Copa del Rey we were knocked out by Real Madrid in pretty embarrassing fashion losing 6-0 overall but we did end up doing very well in every single competition so can we do it all in season number nine well I tell you what ladies and gentlemen it is an absolute miracle we have pipped both Real Madrid and Barcelona on to the La Liga Santander title in season number nine. And this is exactly where I am in real life. I'm going to sim season 10 once I've finished editing seasons one to nine. I am absolutely buzzing. It is 11 o'clock on the day before you watch this in the evening. And we have finally won the league. You have no idea how long this rebuild has taken me. 95 points, a 50 goal difference, 30 wins, 5 draws, and 3 losses coming against Athletic, uh, Atletico, sorry, Real Betis and Valencia. We were very good against both Barcelona and Real Madrid, where we drew to Barcelona once away from home, but beat Madrid twice and beat Barcelona I'm absolutely buzzing that I can now start actually editing this video and I can believe that we won the La Liga. 96 goals this season conceded way too many because as you know from the very start, centre-backs have been very, very difficult to come by. But this season, we actually managed to sign one. Now, as you can see, I've pretty much been signing like, players for free, 2.5 million, not a lot of money being spent at all. But this season, we spent £16 million on a centre-back because Mikel Diaz, who we had started to develop as a centre-back, joined Arsenal for £7.5 million in a release clause, which is the other one that I mentioned from the very start of this video, which I was frustrated about. But then we saw this geezer, David... Aretia, a centre-back from Real Sociedad, who played 41 games this season, got a 6.91, has great pace, 17 determination, 15 heading, 15 tackling, and 13 marking. Uh, finally, a centre-back partner for our boy, Inyaki Ochoa. They're not the greatest of mates, but they'll do, all right? We've built a set of defence from these bunch of misfits and made a team that has somehow won La Liga. Unai Saiwan in goal. Unai Nunez, who is now how old? He's now 35 
playing as a wing back on support in our ridiculously attacking system. He's, he's somehow done it, all right? I've got no idea. We've got Imano at left back. We've got Ihan Sanchez and Uno Vincendor in midfield. Nico Williams at right wing. Mikel Castro and Cam. David Rojo up front. And Oscar Mateo up top, who had an outstanding season with 32 goals and 7 assists. Nico Williams 26 and 12. Oihan Sanchez 18 and 14. Mikel Castro 13 and 12. David Rocco 11 and 7. I can actually rest this evening. I'm going to start editing this video, but while I'm editing, I'm going to simulate season 10, see if we can somehow win the Champions League, see if we can go back to back in the Liga. We're going to have probably a brand new right back for this season because Unai Nunez is about to go to the retirement home. We've got runner 16 in the Champions League this season by PSG. We've got runners up in the Super Cup against Liverpool. We've got to the semi-finals of the Copa del Rey again by Real Betis. It'll be good to finally lift that one. And also runners up in the Super Copa de España as well. Let we go ahead, simulate season 10, and finally rest for the evening. Well, here we are then, the end of season number 10. This is our first 10 season rebuild of this FM. So if you want to see more of these, let me know who they should be done with down below. Let's see how we get on. To be fair, not too bad of a season at all. Coming in fourth place on 78 points. The ridiculous Real Madrid and Barcelona carried on their stupendous form and took their title back. Madrid now winning, I think, seven, Barcelona with two, and of course, ourselves with one, which was last season. Jude Bellingham, another 24-goal season, 27 goals, 11 assists. Them stats are outrageous. Oh my lord, Jude Bellingham, if you turn out like that, the amount of Ballon d'Ors you are going to win is going to be absolutely scary. Now, of course, in the Champions League, we didn't end up winning that either. We got knocked out in the knockoff playout round by Sevilla, who finished above us in the league as well on 84 points. The Copa del Rey, we sadly never managed to win, losing to Almera this time. And the Super Copa, we were saying final by Real Madrid as well. But... You know what? I'm a very, very happy man. We managed to build Athletic Bilbao into Spanish League champions. Nico Williams, with over 40 goal contributions in this season, is outrageous. And I mentioned we would check back on this progress tab once we finish the whole entire rebuild. And look at this man's progression. That is absolutely fantastic. Some great physical stats. Mentally, he's gone up very well as well. And again, in terms of his head attributes, much better dribbling, crossing corners and long shots. And a technique gone up plus one as well. 17 determination obviously helps an absolute ton as well. So Nico Williams is looking fantastic. How has Ojan Sanchez got on? Again, his stats have developed an outrageous rate. If we go to these, we're at the all time. It doesn't actually look that good at all, which surprises me. Ahead of a lot, plus two in free kick taking, plus two in marking, plus one in tackling, plus one a lot in the men. Yes, mental has gone up quite a lot. Physicals have gone down due to him now being a central defensive midfielder, which is interesting. But, you know, a very good progression in terms of the whole team. And I'm very happy with the Wonder Kids we end up bringing through. And it's funny that Oscar Mateo, our very first signing of just £1 million, ends up being our star striker at the end. Ten seasons in. So, a nice little way to wrap things up. Obviously, this save is available for you guys on Patreon as well. I haven't done a Patreon plug in this video. But if you do want to pick up this Athletic Build by Save, it's going to be available for you guys on Patreon for £5 a month. We're going to put the first season on here. Probably the fifth season on here as well and the tenth season in a media file link for you guys. If you want to download this save, it's available on Patreon down below. If this isn't your if this is your first rebuild watching of the channel, there are some unbelievable rebuilds on the channel recently, just like our best video ever on the channel, this Manchester United video. Go ahead and watch that one.